So I'm going to talk about laboratory impact on sperm quality in ART. So one of the emerging themes in uh, current literature at the moment is that of sperm selection for ART. And whilst this is really exciting, I think it's important to still think and to still focus on the basics of what we do in the lab because I think it's the attention to detail is where we're likely to increment our success in ART. Now, eggs are a pretty precious commodity. We have relatively few of them to work with. And for that reason, they probably are the focus of our attention in an ART lab in terms of stimulation and timing. So timing of your HCG trigger, timing of your egg retrieval, and ultimately timing of what we do in the IVF lab. In Dundee, we alter our aspiration pressure to reflect the length and gauge of our needle that we use, and also to reflect whether we're flushing follicles or not. And similarly, we pay very close attention to the temperature that the eggs are exposed to, both in terms of the ambient temperature that we work within, but also the consumables that the eggs are exposed to in terms of flush temperature and uh, the collecting uh, tubes and heated blocks and so on. Similarly, in the lab, we pay close attention to pH and to light. We have filters for our lights. We have filters for air quality to ensure that it is uh, eliminated of microbes and of VOCs. But what about sperm? If you think about it, the procurement of sperm is really very much less involved, and we have usually many, many of them to work with. And yet, if you think about there's 250 million cells in an average ejaculate, only a few thousand of them will reach the fallopian tube in vivo, and ultimately only one will fertilize an egg. So what we're looking for is something very special, and what we do in the lab is therefore very crucial. And that again involves attention to timing, so timing from production to preparation and from production to usage, and also the method of preparation that we use and the finer points of the methodology within that. And similarly, attention to temperature and pH and light and air quality. Now, there's two points about timing. The first of which it's really important to quickly and efficiently produce, uh, prepare your sample following production. And the reason for that is that the longer that sperm are exposed to seminal plasma, the uh, more uh, uh, negative the effect, both in terms of sperm quality and sperm function. The second thing is thinking about the timing of when you're going to use your sperm sample. Because following preparation, the longer time goes by, the greater your DNA fragmentation. And certainly by four, six, eight hours, you'll see a significantly higher DNA fragmentation index compared to time zero, depending on which method you've used. Now, the two commonest methods of sperm preparation are density centrifugation and swim up. Both of them are efficient at yielding highly motile, morphologically normal cells. They tend to eliminate cells with DNA damage. And both of them have quite equal uh, outcomes in ART. It's worthwhile noting that whilst both of these methods significantly reduce bacterial and viral load, they don't eliminate it completely. Now, you probably get a better yield with a density centrifugation preparation compared to a swim up. But you need to be really, really careful about what you're doing in terms of your method, because all of the small details of what you do will have an impact on your sperm yield. So for example, the volume of your gradient layer should be between one and a half to two mils. And if you have a lower volume, you will reduce your yield. Your similarly, your centrifuge tube diameter will make an impact on your yield as will the speed and the timing that you centrifuge for. So in our lab, we do 300 G for 10 minutes, uh, sorry, 20 minutes, followed by a 500 G wash spin for 10 minutes. Now, if you increase your spin speed, you will increase your yield, but you will decrease or diminish the quality of your yield. Similarly, if you spin for longer, you will increase your yield within reason. But Remember that if you go above 800 Gs, you will significantly impact the quality of your sperm because of the damage due to the centrifugation forces. Generally speaking, any further wash steps or a swim up following uh, a density centrifugation is not required. 
In terms of your pellet quality, you will get better pellet quality if you use a conical based rather than a round based tube. You will also have a better pellet quality if you use a swing out arm on your centrifuge rather than a fixed arm rotor. And lastly, it's worthwhile thinking about minimizing contamination by watching each other doing that pellet aspiration and making sure you then decant it into a fresh tube. Now, with swim up preparation, the jury is out whether you have an effect on DNA fragmentation or not. But thinking again about what you're going to be using your sperm for, sperm prepared following swim up have a better survival, certainly if you're going to be keeping them warm in an incubator. Scanning the horizon for future technologies, I've heard quite a lot of interesting talks in the last couple of days looking at other selection techniques, such as selection on the basis of electrical charge, like electrophoresis, or magnetic sorting, or on adherence properties like Ednexin-5 or hyaluronic acid binding, pixie dishes. But the bottom line is, no matter what you're doing, you need to be paying attention closely to the detail of what you're doing. Finally, just the last few slides here, thinking about temperature, the take home message here is that a lower temperature is better for your sperm, which seems quite counterintuitive. When you're thinking about preparing eggs, you want to keep them warm and cozy. Sperm do better in a lower temperature, so preparation at room temperature is the thing to do. And this is the electromagnetic spectrum. You can see in the middle there the colors of the visual light spectrum which the eye can detect, usually between about 390 and 700 nanometers. What you'll also notice is that at the blue-purple UV end of the range are shorter wavelengths, higher, higher energy wavelengths, and at the red end are the longer wavelengths, lower energy wavelengths. Now, sperm aren't usually exposed to light in vivo, so you would imagine that perhaps light isn't very good for sperm. But actually, some light is a good thing, and so it's okay to be doing sperm prep in a, in a lit environment, in a lab. What we do know is that exposure to visual light or to the red end of the spectrum can even have positive effects on motility and fertilizing capability. But certainly when you look at the blue end of the spectrum and UV light, then it has a negative impact. So perhaps we should have filters on our lights in our andrology preparation lab as well as in the IVF lab. Lastly, air quality. It's important that you have uh, some sort of air quality system to filter out microbes, to filter out fungal uh, spores, to filter out VOCs, and also to think about having some sort of air exchange to keep the air fresh. I couldn't resist this last slide. I'm sure some of you will recognize this slogan from a well-known German car manufacturer, which means literally progress through technology. And I think it's so true for what we do in terms of embracing science and embracing technology to try and overcome couples who are troubled by infertility. And whilst technology is a vital part of what I do, I do believe that the simple things that we can do in an ART lab can also make a significant difference to improving our success rates. Thank you very much.